Hey folks, this is Danny with Stuff I Kinda Care About, and today, as you can see, I don't have a light blue cutting mat in front of me. I'm actually going to pull the camera in a little bit closer and I'm going to write out some stuff for you, because I'm going to show you how I measured myself for the kilt that I'm currently making. I've looked all over YouTube, I have not seen anything on how to actually measure yourself. And so that got me thinking, hey, maybe I can figure out how to do this. I already own a couple of kilts, so I was able to kind of reverse engineer those. And let me make this abundantly clear. What I'm showing you is not at all professional. This is me figuring out a way to do it. Uh, I by no means think that this is the definitive way to make a kilt. I actually know for a fact that it isn't because I've changed a couple of things to kind of make my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to show you how I've com like kind of computed my measurements a little bit and then hopefully you can make your own decisions and come up with something truly awesome. So let's see where this goes. I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So that angle will change to kind of a top-down angle in the now-ish time, I guess. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I measure myself for a kilt. That tape is coming up. Uh, this is really weird. I'm not used to uh, having my camera like this, so apologize in advance for it being a little bit awkward. It's probably going to get a little bit shaky. Uh, the camera is actually on my desk, and so as I write, it's probably going to move a little bit, and it honestly is probably not going to be the best at keeping in focus throughout this whole thing. So, in advance, I apologize. So what you want to do is you want to measure yourself for a kilt, because apparently you want to make one, if you're anything like me. This is a really, really bad drawing of a kilt. Uh, this is it in its totality. You have two front panels, and then you have the pleats. What you're going to want to know is what your waist measures. I measure my waist about two inches above where I usually keep my belt. I wear a 36 in men's. Uh, I have no clue what my size is in women's. So if you're wearing women's clothing, I'm sorry. I don't know how you factor what your waist is in men's. I, I don't know that, sorry. But you don't have to know that either because what you need to do is actually grab a fabric tape measure, one of the like plastic ones that's very, very flexible, and you want to measure around your waist. Again, I go, it's about two inches below my actual hip bone is where I measure for my fitting, and that for me is 40 inches. Alright, so we're going to write total waist. That's supposed to be an I. Just ignore me not knowing how to spell. Please. So I got 40 inches when I measured, which means that the clothing companies are lying to me. And I hate it. Um, now, I need to take this number, and I need to figure out what the total measurement for the kilt is going to be. So, and we don't need that right now. We will need it in a few minutes to check some of our other work. So the total length is going to be this number here. And I'm going to actually multiply that by one and a half. And that's going to come out to 60 inches. And so this is going to be basically from here to here is going to be 60 inches. That's an important thing to know. Now, figuring this out, uh, when you're measuring around your waist to know what your waist size is, go ahead and measure from the same point down, uh, kneel on the ground and hold your tape at the one inch mark and actually let it drop down the front of your thigh until it meets the ground. And that's going to be the length of the kilt that you want. You want the kilt to actually uh, sit pretty much uh, right at the top of your kneecap. Uh, that's what I've been told and I could be wrong. 
So that's what I went with, and I like how it looks, which is kind of important to me, because I'm the one making it and wearing it. So, we know what our total length is. Now we need to know what these things measure, the front panels. All right. And no, I don't usually write like this. I'm just trying to keep my hand as much out of the shot as possible and also not touch this too much. So we're going to take this measurement, my waist. We're going to divide that in half. That's 20 inches. Now, if only it were that simple. Uh, I'm going to subtract 2 inches. I'm doing 18 inch panels. Alright. The reason I'm subtracting 2 inches from each panel is just because I, I, I found that to be the length that I want. If you are slimmer than me, I would start making that number a little bit smaller. If you are larger than me, I would make that number bigger. I don't know what the ratio there is. This is just what felt comfortable to me, and it seems to be working. Uh, the way that I figured that out, though, is I held a scrap piece of fabric up to the front of my body and actually figured out what felt right. So you can just fold your fabric that you're using up and see what feels about wide enough. And then, once you have this number, you can figure out how much this section for the pleats is going to be. Which is another very important thing. Uh, so, it's going to be 40 divided by 2 again, and that's equaling 20. But now we're going to add 2 inches, because we took it from this panel, and we're going to add another 2 inches, because there's another panel. So, you basically want to take what you subtract from half of your kilt for a panel, and add it, and then add it again. I, I, it doesn't make a ton of sense. But, the cool thing is, is this number plus this number plus this number equals this number. So, 24 plus 18 plus 18 is 60 inches. So, that's why we wanted to go ahead and have that. We wanted to make sure our homework checked out. I sincerely doubt that if you are any size other than exactly my size, this will actually work for you. But, these are things I've found helpful. It gave me a place to start. So I know what my pleats are looking like. I want to know how many pleats I need in this section. So this is 24 inches. And that's important. I need to know how many pleats I need running vertically in this section. So, we're going to figure out a pleat. Uh, I want my pleats to be an inch and a half wide. A traditional kilt, they are one inch pleats. I did not feel like sewing that many pleats. An inch and a half takes the number from 24 seams uh, down to 16, which is really nice. So you do 24 divided by 1.5, and that is 16 pleats. Alright. <clears throat> Now, I need to know how much fabric I need for the totality of this kilt. The fabric I'm using is this brown fabric. So, this is the vertical on the fabric. And I would like to use three of these actual little rectangles for each pleat. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm folding it over and I'm leaving it about an inch and a half there. And I'm leaving this seam on the front of the pleat so that that pattern can just repeat throughout the, the piece. I know that from here to here it's 8 inches. Uh, you do not have to do 8 inches, you can do 6 inches, that means that you will need a little bit less fabric. Um, you can do more than 8 inches, it's kind of whatever you want to do. I chose 8 because the pattern dictated it. If you were using something with a vertical pattern, I would actually encourage you to follow it it makes folding the pleats in a lot easier. So, knowing that each pleat is going to use 8 inches of fabric, I just multiply my 16 by 8, and I get 128 inches. That's very nice. So now I know I need 128 inches of fabric total for this section here. 
Oh wait, I still have these two sections. Well that's easy enough, I know that that's 18 inches. So I take my 128, I add 18, I add 18 again, and that equals 164 inches of fabric. That's a great thing to have. How much do I need to buy? They don't sell fabric in inches. Well, that's simple enough. I take 164, I divide it by 36, because fabric is sold in yards. Because America. And that is going to equal 4.55 repeating. That's how many yards of fabric I need if I want to do this in one continuous piece. Say this right here is my piece of fabric. The other thing I could do is I could bisect this at the half uh, if I have a long enough piece of fabric. Remember, you're going to need about 24 inches, maybe more, maybe less, for the, the actual length of the kilt. So if you've got 50 plus inches this way on your fabric, then you can cut it this way. You can actually seam this edge and this edge together and kind of take this and extend it and make it this really long piece, and you could get away with two and a half to three yards of fabric at that point. Personally, I am actually hand sewing this kilt because I want it to have a hand sewn look. Like I'm literally hand stitching everything, not machine sewn, and it's I'm not happy with myself for doing that because it's so much work. Oh God. But anyway. I don't want an extra seam in the middle of my fabric, because that's just more work for me. So I measured out the whole thing out of one piece of cloth. The other thing that we want to take into account is seams. Okay, so if traditionally with kilts, um, they actually have what is called a, uh, a selvage edge here, I believe. Um, and that is a finished, like a factory finished edge. Um, I don't have any wool handy to show you what a wool uh, selvage edge looks like, but it's actually really nicely professionally done, unlike some other fabrics. So I keep that as my front edge, and then the top, I'm actually just doing a simple stitch all along it. I can show you on this fabric, this is my hem or not hem, this is my edge that I'm using for the bottom, and I actually really like that slightly rough finish, so I'm leaving that alone. Um, for the edges of my panels, I'm just going to do a simple uh, stitch along there just to keep the threads in place. Other than that, what you really, a couple of things that have been helpful for me. One is having a good work surface. I used this table. I actually had my cutting mat on it, and I laid my fabric out. I measured 18 inches in from the length, and then I went back that 8 inches, and I actually folded over to that 18-inch point. And then I just kept going 8 inches for every single pleat until I got to the point where I had 18 inches left after the last pleat. If you're doing a little bit more fabric, then just measure this until you get this number of pleats that you decided that you need, which is 16 for me, uh, or 24 inches of pleats, whichever one uh, you feel more comfortable with. And then you can cut this one down to 18 inches. Uh, sewing and all of that stuff I'm going to get into in another video. I just wanted to do a simple, really quick, hey, here's how you measure it. I'll give you some tips and tricks on folding in the pleats and sewing it up on another part of this video or another video entirely. We'll see how long this ran. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic week. I know I am. Please continue to be excellent to one another, love each other genuinely, and go out and make something. If, ooh, I forgot to say this, sorry. I, I was acting like I was wrapping up. If you are differently sized than me, do me a favor, please comment. Please let me know what's going on. I want to know how this thought process works for you, whether you're larger or smaller than me. Hopefully this will be helpful. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm just sharing what I did 
to arrive where I got to, and it's been helpful for me. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'm going to call it quits for now.